so she can buy a bigger house. If you want somebody who's gonna speak truth to power, then vote for somebody who's gonna speak the truth to you. Why am I the only person on this stage, at least, who can say that January 6th now does look like it was an inside job? That the government lied to us for 20 years about Saudi Arabia's involvement in 9-11? That the great replacement theory is not some grand right-wing conspiracy theory, but a basic statement of the Democratic Party's platform? That the 2020 election was indeed stolen by big tech? That the 2016 election, the one that Trump won for sure, was also one that was stolen from him by the national security <laughs> establishment okay. that actually Thank put you. up the Trump-Russia collusion hopes that they knew was false. There's a reason why I'm the only person That'll on the it, stage sir. who can Thank say you. these things. That's what it's going to take, not people who were licking his boots one time and now Monday okay. morning quarterbacking and criticizing when it's convenient. This is Mongolia Mindset, and today we're going to be typing Vivek. Um... Somebody recommend that we type him, get him on the uh, the channel. So we're gonna type him today using Linda Barron's interaction styles with cognitive uh, functions, temperament, interaction styles. We have those videos. I'm gonna drop a link to uh, that playlist. Um, it's how to find anyone's personality type, and I'll also drop a link on the comments of the cognitive functions breakdown, so you can get caught up on those. I believe they are the best um, that's out there. Um, we have examples, everything. It's just absolutely wonderful. If you watch those videos, you should be able to type anybody. Okay, let's go check and see what the monkeys, morons, people who drink and uh, smoke and free base cocaine has a mass. So personality database, they have Vivek. I don't even want to say his name because I'm going to fuck it up. Rant, rant, I don't know, whatever. Uh, they have him as an ENTJ. Okay, so let's go check the chart. So ENTJ, that's my personality type. So direct outcome. Uh, systematic abstract T F I um, S E N I. Did I hit everything? Mm, pragmatic as well. Um, if he meets those metrics, we'll call him up ENTJ. If he doesn't, uh, they're also direct. Um, if he doesn't, then we'll find out what his actual personality type is. Okay. And as we'll be going, once we get five of a certain metric, we'll go ahead and start knocking them off. Okay. This should be fun. This should be fun. Okay. Um, and guys, we are still doing the free typing uh, uh, sessions by us. Um, all we do is ask that you want to subscribe. Uh, two, you join our Facebook group or Discord. And three, you message our moderator, Cody, and he will get back to you with availability. I think we are the best when it comes to typing um, on the internet, point blank, period. I think, I mean, you can put, I don't give a damn who it is. Um, I think we're the best absolute best and afterwards you get to ask me any questions or any of the other members uh, any questions anything like that and if you want to debate we could debate it you can ask me anything this is completely open you can say Mercer what do you think is the best stock for the next five years Mercer how do you think I should get more girls Mercer what do you think is the best gym routine Mercer you know anything you can ask me anything that's completely open so uh, that's completely free I don't know anybody who's actually doing that Especially uh, with the quality that we do for you guys, spending at least 30 to an hour. Can't get that shit anywhere. So, uh, yeah, let them know. We're going to get into this and comment below what you think his type is. And uh, comment below a celebrity you want type. We will eventually start getting to these, start knocking them out more. Um, in the future, I will be breaking down um, Enneagram, most likely with Thomas or uh, Shelly or Christian. We'll be breaking those down the same way we did the. Um, my brain's going blank here. Um, we'll be doing it the same way we did uh, how to find anyone's personality type, okay, with a PowerPoint and everything like that. Those will be more extensive, though, because there's a lot in Enneagram, and I want to make sure you guys um, get that. I, I think those uh, videos will be a testament of time. What we know about unidentified flying objects, just give it to us straight. Every politician dances to the tune like a circus monkey to their biggest donor. How do you expect to unite the United States when you struggle to do so with Raven? I think the way we're going to unite this country is by... But before we get into it, guys, I've been so getting interested sorry. into politics lately, if you couldn't tell from the... It was a month after getting 30% off. My parents came to this country with not a lot of money. I will say one of the biggest criticisms that I've seen from people who watch you yeah. is that they know your stances. They know your policies, but they feel like they don't actually know you as a person. Yeah. 
they kind of feel like you're this human chat GPT. Yeah, I've been but they don't. That. <laughs> they don't know you. Yeah. So I'm curious. Growing up, what did you want to be? You know, I went through like most young people a lot of different phases. My parents, I think, went through a lot of different phases. Okay, so that's looking like progression or journey. A lot of different phases. You don't know what you want. Woo! I'm gonna hit him for progression there. He's on the journey. Progression, movement, journey, whatever. Acclimatized us to think of being a doctor when we grew up. My mom was a doctor. A lot of our family members, uncles and aunts were too. I think that came though from more of a place of financial security. My parents came to this country with not a lot of money. And part of that immigrant mentality is just a very defensive instinct, which is how are you going to have you know, a stable, secure life. So that's kind of the defensive environment in which we were raised. I, you know, at, at points along the way, look at what other kids' parents are doing, thought maybe I would be a lawyer at times. That seemed like not a career that called me in terms of being in a service profession. I honestly kept an open mind when I went into college, but there wasn't something that I thought of. Open mind, eh, you can say that's N-E. <coughs> we'll just note aside, S-I-N-E. We're hitting for one. Open of that mind. to say that this is definitely what I want to be. I had like, different what about as a kid? figures and mentors. Like you're like five years old. Oh, Why did you didn't want to be an investment banker. I mean, when yeah. No, no. Five. I think I, I mean, wanted to play. I think I wanted to be a basketball player. Really? Basketball. Yeah, yeah. You're was, taller than I expected you. Oh, thank you. People do say that to me. Actually. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know why. How tall are you? Six feet that. tall. How about six? Yeah. Yeah. Short for the NBA though. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Not enough. NBA Fair standards. Enough. Yeah. In principle, you can achieve everything you ever want within the limitations of what. You, God has so given you as so your talent. You so that there's any statement you can achieve anything you want within the limitations. I can say the systematic approach as well, but we'll, we'll hold off on that. A stable, secure life. So that's kind of the defensive environment in which we were raised. I, you know, at, at points along the way, look at what other kids' parents are doing. Thought maybe I would be a lawyer at times. That seemed like not a career that called me in terms of being in a service profession. I honestly kept an open mind when I went into college, but there wasn't something that I thought of that to say that this is definitely what I want to be. I well, had like, different what about as a kid? figures and mentors. Like you're like five years old. Oh, that's did, a long you didn't want to be an investment banker I mean, when yeah. you were No, no, I think I, I wanted mean, to play. I think I wanted to be a basketball player. Really? Basketball. Yeah, yeah. You're was, taller than I expected you. Oh, thank you. People <laughs> do say that to me, actually. Yeah, I, I don't know why everybody How tall are you, six feet tall? How about six, yeah. yeah. Short for the NBA, though. <laughs> Fair enough. Not NBA Fair standards. Enough. Yeah. yeah. In principle, you... I got to say that's self deprecation there. Short for the NBA. So I'm going to hit that for F-E. T-I can achieve everything you ever want within achieve. the limitations of what you, God has so given no, you as so your talent. So when did you realize that like basketball is not going to be uh, probably thing. around you know? probably around fourth grade? Yeah, fourth this grade. was just and realistically just, not going to be. I, I might have made the select team, but then there's the AAU league, which is yeah, you guys have no reason to know this, but that's kind no of plan. where it gets really serious. And I was getting nowhere near that, and so I ended up switching sports to tennis, where I thought I had a better shot of actual success and ended up you know doing well too but that wasn't going to be in the car I could say that's a pragmatic approach I mean he knew he's not going to do it so fuck it let's do what works tennis is looking like it looks works a little bit better hard to be a professional tennis player either but a lot of the people that I played with did end up going to the pro tour and it's a very different life how were you as a kid growing up it's hard to know I, I, now that I'm a parent yeah. you kind of think about what you were like I was somebody who probably enjoyed I was pretty social enjoyed meeting other kids. I was probably a kid who conversed with, you know, when my parents would have their own adults or whatever over before my younger brother was, uh, you know, he's four years younger than me, but before he was of age, I was also able to probably be comfortable talking to people older than me or whatever. That was just the environment mm -hmm. that my parents were in. Comfortability is, uh... is me in. I was always pretty curious, I think. I like to explore new things. I've Ooh. always enjoyed... Ooh. Go back. That's hardcore any. Oh, no, 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 no. You can't be saying hardcore any stuff like that, man. I was also able to that's probably hardcore. be comfortable that, talking that, to people. That, that, that means that's got to be in the first or second slot there. Oh, my God. Even me or whatever. That was just the environment mm -hmm. that my parents raised me in. I was always pretty curious, Ooh. I think. I like to explore new things. Ooh, I've always ooh, that's hardcore any. I like to explore new things. Enjoyed almost debate and arguing and storytelling. Where do you think you got that from? Oh, and that God. Oh, 
I mean, this guy is coming off like a ENTP. No, 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 no. Running for president, ENTP. You can't be doing that. What are you doing? Stop it. Leave that for the ESTJs. Inquisitive yeah, mind. It's a good question. Were your parents like that? Some Did people you? are just born like that. I don't think I turned out the way that my parents intended to mold. He keeps going back to, I think, I think, I think, I think. Generally speaking, you hear that too much. That's usually T.I. Uh, and and I, mean, I mean that in a good way. I, and I think that they wanted a guy who put his head down. They wanted, that's any. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and knock him off for any S.I., okay? Okay, so that's um, eight types eliminated. That's all the S.E.N.I. users are gone. Let's go, Vivek down followed the rules learned how to do something useful built a successful and stable career and a family that had more security than they had or felt like they had when they were in this country that was their you know mindset for me like the kind of thing that you would hear <coughs> in my household growing up would not be something like dream and be whatever you want to be when mm -hmm. you grow up no it wasn't that it was you need to focus and have stability and make sure that you have a clear path to a stable career. And that was instilled in us. Clear starting. path. So somebody's either, his parents are either a guardian or they are a SENI user that's high. Okay, clear path. At a very young age. And so now that I'm talking through it with you guys, when you ask me where did that come from, yeah. I guess there's something innate probably in many kids that make them react. But it overpowered. Against what their parents, yeah, I mean, but, but there's a reactionary instinct. And so, you know, I haven't had a conversation like this in a while, but it makes me think about maybe it was a reactionary impulse that read, led me to actually pursue a career as an entrepreneur and live a career life that was completely unstructured at every step of the way. It's interesting because every step of the way that's progression. And he's, he's going against what his parents wanted. He wants his own freedom, entrepreneur, that's freedom, pragmatic. You kind of fit the mold of what your parents wanted from you for a very long time. I yeah. mean, especially with your job at Goldman Sachs. But then for some reason, you know, it's like... I, I, actually, what's, what's really just interesting... Initiated that. Okay. Is, for me, when I went to Harvard and then had an open-ended career plan, that alone was quite a bit... Open-ended career plan progression. The leap. And then when I decided to potentially explore, you know, career paths outside of explore traditional... Explore career paths. He's in E, high in E. Science or medicine. That itself, I, I know I know that the way I look at it now, or the way we would look at it mm. now, is that's like a pretty cut and dry yeah, you know, assembly line yes. path. For my family's upbringing, that was a weird thing to do. That was already off the beaten path. They didn't know anything about what that world mm -hmm. entailed. So yes, in some ways it was Abstract. itself a much more, conf in retrospect, part of the assembly line path to go get an internship at Goldman Sachs. But if you ask my parents, that was like a foreign notion to them, which was interesting. Actually. But you still tried, or I guess had that like subconscious pushing on you that was like, okay, find like a high earning job that's yeah. stable where you work a lot, which was the Goldman Sachs thing. But it seems like you still had this like, thing that you were born with that was like okay no 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 we got to do something more creative we got to do something yeah that is I mean, it was higher risk it was definitely beaten into my head so so there's yeah. you know there's both parts of you right i mean if we all look inside each of ourselves and ask ourselves who are we i mean there's the part that's beaten into you i, mean, I guess in freudian terms you call that i guess the super ego or whatever mm -hmm. and then there's the inner cell okay so he's getting abstract here and the combination of those two things create a blend of who we are as people so yes there was the part of me also that grew up with some sense of stability and trying the tried and true path. That's half of me. And then half of me just wants to break that and rebel against it and or just explore. Rebel against that pragmatic. My own creative self about where my passions actually lead me. Now, I would say that in that summer internship, what I chose, probably, it's probably one of the choices if I was to go back again, I probably wouldn't have chose that particular summer internship, but I learned a lot from it in mm -hmm. retrospect. And yet, even my senior year in college, that was part of what probably <coughs> motivated me to start my first business, which I did in my senior year after that yeah. internship after my junior year, which is my first business that I founded, but I probably did it 
in some ways out of feeling constrained by that first summer interview. So it seems like you very much want to have free will to go with what you want. Did you ever get in trouble with your parents growing up? Yes, I mean, like, but like not in, nothing, nothing extraordinary. <laughs> You're fairly obedient, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Care yeah I mean, like, he's I was would... talking about autonomy right here. Um, that's generally um, that's pragmatic. Okay, he likes his own autonomy. Um, the, the, he likes his freedom. The only time you can run in trouble with that is when you're dealing with NFJs. They can hit you on the freedom too, um, but they're just about the group the cooperation and the way they go about it. It's a little bit different. It's kind of like weird, like Goku, where Goku fucking does obnoxious shit. Like uh, they could have ended the androids, but Goku and I wants to fight the androids. So a lot of people have to die because Goku wants this, you know. But he does it in a nice guy, good way. But he's, you know, he's still a piece of shit. Wasn't I? Wasn't like I wasn't. The, I wasn't like a kid who I, I was not the kid who ended up in detention. But you were that also wasn't. highly opinionated. Yeah, like was, uh, so. Very back much. in the day when yeah. you were a kid, did your opinions ever get you into trouble with your peers? Did you ever get into a fight, or did you ever like get bullied or something? So I went to a public school from first through eighth grade. It wasn't a particularly great public school, but it was a public school that was the one we were districted in, nonetheless. That was a place where actually being the straight laced academic, you know, put your head down, go to science class kind of kid wasn't actually particularly rewarded. Mm -hmm. And so there was probably one instance, this is what caused my parents to switch me out of that public school to go to a Jesuit high school. There was a flight of stairs, I was carrying my science books from class to class, got pushed down that flight of stairs, resulted in me probably, I mean, we think that was the cause about a few months later having to get a hip surgery. Who pushed it, you? It was a random kid. There's no way Did you way have a, a history with this kid? It, no. It's, it, it's actually, it's actually a really random, interesting. Yeah, yeah, it's really random. A lot of these kids grew up in difficult backgrounds. Yeah. So this is a school where a lot of kids in the classes, they weren't in my classrooms necessarily, but were like one or two years left behind. There was a wing of the school called the Success Wing, which is the wing that they would tell kids like me to stay away from, because mm -hmm. these are kids who may be 14, 15 years old, but are still in you know seventh grade. But they called it the Success. They, wing? That's what that's the wing that they called. That sounds it. a bit counter. Well, yeah, it is counter. Kind of yeah, but the wanna... Success Wing was. I, I probably yeah. went. I went in there for one class ever, but the Success Wing was the wing that you stayed out of. But yeah, it's a place where you know you got a nerdy kid with you know glasses and carrying a science textbook from class to class who's an academic guy that's a target but that was also a good experience for me because you know you're an outsider in that setting that's fine but i went to a different school setting where i was an outsider which was saint x high school in cincinnati so that was a catholic high school yeah i was a lone hindu kid and that was also an interesting learning experience too and so i've probably always been in settings where i have been comfortable grew to be comfortable i would say yeah Grew in, to be comfortable as I... in being in settings where I was, you know, often the odd man out. So, and that's kind of was was my big yeah. part of my. Upbringing. What happened to the bully afterwards? I don't. The guy pushed you. Yeah, I mean, I don't think it was like I didn't go running to a teacher. We didn't like. Really? I don't. I mean, it was. I think probably nothing. I can't. I couldn't even remember who the kid was. It wasn't a kid who's in my classes or in, you know, because we were, uh, you know, they had slightly advanced classes or slightly remedial classes. There were different classrooms but in between classes it's the same group of kids going together in one school and yeah probably nothing happened and you actually like tumbled down a flight of stairs yeah we were pushed down a flight of stairs wow okay yeah. I mean, it happens it's the kind of stuff that goes you know growing up it's probably the biggest instance of what I would call the closest thing to bullying that I experienced but it was definitely something that mm -hmm. you know a teacher of mine then pulled my parents aside when they picked me up from school they're like you need to get this kid the heck out of here and he was a teacher in that school. So when I was in high school, I observed two different predominant archetypes of, of the student, which is like those who work extremely hard and have to study consistently to get good grades and they feel pressured usually by their parents or by some other factor to like put their nose to the book and yeah. like grind versus those where school kind of just came easy. They would get good grades, but they wouldn't have to study as much as the other person. I'm wondering which one of those two would you say <coughs> you were? Because I see you, yeah. you're like ultra successful, Thank right? You, Hundreds of millions of dollars. You're running for your for president, which is just insane. Like which one, which archetype would lead to hmm. this future? I don't think that you could necessarily predict one as a path. I, I think one of the things I've, I mean, that's just my honest answer. If I was to, to think back which one I fit, there's probably elements of both. Mm -hmm. I mean, we did have parents who were very, if this and that, that's a T.I. statement there. 
focused on the traditional path to educational achievement, come home, do your homework, et cetera. But did it come easy to you? But but yeah, I mean I think that everybody has their native talents and mm -hmm. I think, you know, doing well in school was something that I was naturally prone to do. Mm -hmm. And and, you know, write or read or learn or do math well. Yes, I mean joining the NBA wasn't in the cards for me. But the equivalent of that for academic achievement was, just to be blunt about it. And so I'm not sure that it's the compliant shut up, sit down, do your homework mentality that automatically yields a particular result. I think it's different for different people. I mean, my wife was maybe on the other side of that. She's also incredibly academically successful, you know, one of the smartest people I've met. But, you know, I think that for her, it was much more libertarian mm -hmm. in, her, in her upbringing compared to my parents' focus just because they moved around to different places. And so it was her love of learning that guided her. A lot of talking. I also had a natural love of learning, but it was in an environment that was much more, more structured. disciplined. Mm. But I think it would be probably uh, reductionist and you know, overly trying to fit a square peg into a round hole kind of thing to sort of think that there's one trajectory of parental upbringing that leads to one thing and right, another but I think that leads could to drop another. He's, he's hitting you with any here because he's saying you can't, it's not just one road that leads to Rome, there's many roads that lead to Rome. So you'll see you know, any user say all roads lead to Rome. That's what he's saying. You can't just say it's just one trajectory. As us NI users, we will say that's fucking one way to do this. Parents. Yeah, like, if maybe. you have disciplinarian parents that tell you this is the structure that you should be, and then you have to learn and teach yourself to, like, to be disciplined, to do all of your work, and to, you know, read the, cross your T's and dot your I's and stuff like that. I do think that that does have some long term effect contrary to the person that has like the natural innate inherited intelligence mm -hmm. that learns to be lazy. They learn they can cut corners and stuff like that. And it comes from a more like creative problem solving yeah. type brain. I think so. I think that if we're going to draw that out though, I think that there's definitely more than two tracks. Of course. But those are the, I would say like yeah. those are the two predominant archetypes that mm -hmm. I observed in high school. How old are you? If you don't mind me. 24. Asking. You're 24. Actually. You're oh yeah. 33. I'm still 24. Yeah. Hey, what's that? 33. You're 33. Yeah. Oh, you look, you look younger. Thank you. Um, you're not an age where that's a compliment yet. It's just, it's just, it's just, a, it's just a fact. Uh, now that I've become a parent myself and also just reflecting on seeing a lot of people who've pursued a lot of different journeys, I think that when kids show up, like even at like a very, like a very young age, in many ways they're wired. They are who they are. They're just like, I've got two young sons. They're both, one of them's three and a half. One of them's a year old. They're very different people. And we're raising them in the same circumstances. Like we're not doing anything that's that different from one than the other, mm -hmm. but they're just, they're different predilections. One of them talked earlier than the other one. The other one got up on his feet and is like far more physically dexterous and, and physically exploring versus the other guy's more verbal and emotional exploring. And I think that in some ways we're each, the cake isn't fully baked, but like it's like a half-baked cake hmm. when it shows up. And so how much ever you will to tame that or mold that, I think is a failed pursuit versus... Oh. Yeah, that was abstract. <clears throat> then there's the separate question of, are you in an environment where... Okay, he's that going any, any, this question, that question, then there's a separate, okay. Inner self is able to become... Mm -hmm the maximal version of whatever it's going to be versus an environment that sometimes can choke that out of existence for a long time or an environment that, you know, and this might've been my experience this of this. All motherfucking any God damn. That wasn't really like fitted to what my new true inner nature was, but that actually helped me hone it and discover mm -hmm. it even more. I think that was my experience of it. It depends on what, kind of underlying person almost was born into their bodies that found themselves in that circumstance. Yeah. So I'm uh, abstract. curious yeah, if you could change process. anything with the way your parents raised you, what do you think that would be? I'm not sure I would. I wouldn't be who I am. You know, you're, we're, we're each the product of our own experiences. So I'm not there, there's a few our own experiences. cases where I might look back and life and say there's a few things that I would have done differently and even still there's yeah. not that many of those because like I'm not even a person to dwell on that maybe I should have taken Spanish instead of French in high oh. school like that'd be that'd be on the list for me I would have maybe any been better at speaking yeah. could, the relevant would, language because I would have used it could, more but maybe. I don't 
I'm not wired to think about that because the truth is who I am today. The truth is, T.I. Is absolutely a product of the experiences that led me yeah. here. And so to say that I would have wished for one of those experiences that was different, either in a decision that I made or that my parents made, is almost like rejecting yeah. some aspect of myself today. But I guess how are you parenting your children differently than how your parents raised you? Well, I think there's a couple realities. Um, <laughs> one is... There's a couple realities. Come on, abstract and any. I mean, come on. That's enough any. I mean, abstract. They're going to go ahead and hit them for abstract. Okay, so this guy is abstract. So we got him for abstract. He's hitting I think. I think I could be nasty and just hit him for T-I-F-E because, I mean, it's there. Um, but he is informative. He talks. He's giving a lot of extra information, um, extra content, it's, you know. So abstract in form of S-I-N-E. We are looking at a N-T-P or N-F-P. Okay, and this guy's progression, like I said earlier, this guy is uh, most likely ENTP. Our children grow up in far more comfortable circumstances than I did. I think that that raises both think, opportunities and concerns. I worry a little bit about, I think part of- Worry is any. Of who I am, the scrappy nature of who I am. Scrappy nature of who I am, pragmatic. That's enough to close out pragmatic. So, <coughs> that's enough. Okay, scrappy nature. That means you like to fight. Okay, scrappy. Scrappy dappy do. Comes from a kind of insecurity that you pick up from your parents. It's hard to recreate something that mm -hmm. isn't, you know, it's manufactured a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And on the flip side, I think that we are. On the flip side, on another side, any, on another side. God damn, dude. Wide open to our kids deciding for themselves what it is, discovering for themselves mm -hmm. what it is they want to do. My my older son right now wants to be a fighter jet pilot. That was not within the <laughs> Overton window of acceptable career options. Well, that sounds fun, up. though. Yeah. It does sound fun, actually. But as a father, I bet you that's a little, cons you're like, oh, hold I think, on. No, I, th no, I think actually, age, not at yeah. all. I think, you don't think so? No, I don't think at that so. age, I think it's do. great. And that's that's totally different. I would be different so from nervous for the safety of my kid. Oh, they're three years. Three. There is, oh, come on. There, but even three if, years but old. But even if he goes and become a fighter jet pilot, that's that's something he's passionate about doing. Even if he does, as so any again possibility, that's pretty awesome. That is cool. And, and I think that that's just a different outlook. Now it's interesting to think about this. I, I can't say that one of those approaches is better or worse than the other. It's just the nature of where we are in our lives versus where our parents were in their lives. And I'm a product of that upbringing that would bring up my kids in a different way than my parents did. But that doesn't mean that I wish that my parents did it yeah. any differently. Mm -hmm. So that makes any for sense. your kids, would it bother you if they wanted to pursue a career that made no money whatsoever? Like, let's just say I want to... Totally fine with that. Okay. Absolutely. So it seems like your parenting style is like worlds different than the parenting style you were subjected to when you were a kid. Yeah. Because you're like, so far, do whatever you want, kids. Hey, do whatever you want, any Freedom, freedom, freedom. Yeah. So it did I mean, change. We, you. Want, we would try to teach them. That we, we we do our right, best to instill in them. And, yeah, and, and also yeah. understanding the consequences of their actions, but to empower them. Consequences, any. To be able to make those decisions for themselves. Interesting. Absolutely. But would you want them if their future career made no money? Would you feel good supporting them financially through that? Like, let's no, just say I, they wanted to be an artist. Let's yeah. just say they made no money whatsoever, but they're like, I love art. I'm passionate right. about this. Then the money would have to come from somewhere. Well, uh, if you're a good artist, maybe the money comes from making Possibly. art. Right? Yeah. So, so if you're good, T.I., then the money comes from T.I. There's that. So I think that there's a sweet spot zone for the optimal upbringing that you maybe be able to give your kids from a material perspective. Optimal, talking about the best, more systematic, okay? I think that if you don't have enough money to send your kids to a good school and you're in a bad school district or whatever, and this is related to some of my policy issues, which we can talk about another day, then I think that you're at a disadvantage. I mean, That's if you're- a TI statement there. Let's go back and listen to him. So you guys can, I mean, I have a fucking video breakdown of this shit. Well, to give your kids from a material perspective. I think that 
if you don't have enough if, money to send your kids to a good school and you're in a bad school district or whatever, and this is relates to some of my policy issues. We initiated that shit. We can talk about it another day. Then I think that... Then... You're you in a half of it. I mean, if you're not it. able to get the same kind or quality of education as peers your age, you're at a disadvantage. On the other hand, if you're raised in if, circumstances again. where <coughs> you have nothing to actually aspire to because you're just showered and swimming in wealth that it crowds out your own ability to have hunger and scrappiness. And I've gone to college and law school and otherwise with people who fit that description. I think that's a kind of disservice that you can do for your kid as a parent too. And so our goal for our kids will be allow them to have the true luxury. This is a real luxury to be able to pick the career that allows you to follow your passions without fear of putting food on the dinner table. But that doesn't mean that you have a right to fly around in a private jet. Right. Because do of the you, career that you chose. Do you think that might stifle motivation, knowing that there's always a fallback? Yeah, I wonder about it. Um, it might. I mean, I think that. It might. I think that that's a risk. You know, a lot of kids might end up. I, I know a lot of people who have ended up. I think some of them are in, even in my own extended family who ended up in careers that they're, they're like fine or perfectly complacent with, but isn't exactly what they would have chosen if they were following their true passion. They did it out of the need for achieving a level of financial security and then they pursue hobbies that may more align with their passions and, and nothing to say with the, anything wrong yeah, with that model I, I suppose process. most people work for the sake of putting food on the dinner table but make sure that work isn't the entirety of their life so that they're able to pursue their passions outside of work I'm a little bit different the path I've pursued is one where I don't really draw a distinction between work and hobby and passion and pleasure the way I'm spending my time all the time as best I can is directed towards something that I'm incredibly passionate about and that's the ultimate win I think is to be able to live a life where you're able to do that you can't do that if you literally I mean we're human beings we're like have certain basic needs you need a shelter over your head or food or drink for sustenance, he right? So if mouth, you literally mouth. can't do those things, then yes, you're not able to achieve self-actualization by following your passions through your work. I think that with the, the boundary we'd like to draw for our kids is to give them the opportunity to pursue their passion without fear of putting food on the dinner table, fine. But that doesn't mean that you're gonna live a life of opulence and luxury automatically because of that either. No, that could come through being an exceptional artist or musician or creator of whatever kind you wanna be. But part of the trade-off of making whatever choice it is is you're passionate enough to do that regardless of whether that's the actual reason you're doing it to accumulate green pieces of paper. That's not a reason to pursue a track as a singer or a artist or whatever. You should do it because of your passion. And if you were doing it because it was going to accumulate you green pieces of paper, then that's not following right. your passion. That's just the equivalent of going to... T.I. again. He's big on his fucking passion shit. Work as a, you know, a, a janitor or a cab yeah. driver or what anything you, else that's doing it for the money. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What are your hobbies outside of work? What do you enjoy? To tell you the truth, yeah. I, I do... I know you like. I, I know enough. you love work. I'm the same yeah. way. Yeah. But so, like, so if you if you take that aside, I, I play tennis. You said okay. Yeah, I'm a tennis fanatic. Okay. Uh, the the presidential campaign has not been great for my tennis <laughs> game, but until this kicked off, probably uh, probably since I was like since I turned maybe 29 or 30, for the last seven eight years, yes, tennis has been a big passion. Both watching okay. and playing. I I used to play growing up, and so that's something that I try to keep up as much as I can. Is there anything besides that? terms of like fun hobbies yeah so when kids came into the picture that it, one of the things is that does eat into your hot you got to pick hobbies you get to pick right. one or two i did enjoy for a while um good film and good theater like good hmm. movies and and or good live production yeah so that would be something and then writing is a hobby of mine too actually mm -hmm. just free form carry around a notebook long form writing and some of the argumentative stuff sure i'll publish and you mm -hmm. can see it and you know, wherever I've published this stuff. It's probably what resulted in me writing <coughs> three books over the last couple of years. I, I was probably a suppressed author without knowing sure. it. 
And so writing is is a hobby of mine as well. You've also mentioned before that you are vegetarian for yeah. religious and moral reasons, and that you also don't partake in any sort of like drinking or vices, like like smoking anything as well. I'm yeah. just curious, like why do you decide to like, how is it a moral reason to be vegetarian from your perspective? Because mm -hmm. for me, I, I like eating meat. I think it tastes great and all. But morally, I'm conflicted on it. How do you mm. draw that distinction between like, okay, for your own personal sake, you deem it as immoral. Yeah. And also so, for the other vices. Well, I think that, I think there's the choices that we make in our own lives that are totally different from the policy perspectives. Of course. That of we course. offer on others, yeah. right? So I've been a CEO of a company. Well, do we serve meat at company events? Yes, we do. Because I believe that each person mm -hmm. is able to make the choices that they deserve to make that's best. People are going to make their choices. I'm going to give you the choices. Any, any, any. For them, and certainly from a policymaking perspective, I'm a hard libertarian when it comes to people being able right. to make whatever decisions suit them and not legislating one form of morality. So put that to one side. I was raised in a vegetarian household, but the reason I remain vegetarian is that all else equal, I would rather not kill an animal for my culinary pleasure. If my life depends on it, absolutely. Not gonna think twice. If my nutrition- If my life depended on it, T.I. statement is abstract, hypothetical. Actually depends on it. Like if, if I'm gonna be less healthy in some way, absolutely, I would, I would do it in a heartbeat, no problem. Because I do think that that's a trade-off that's justified if it's going to allow us to- Justification, T.I. T.I. uses once they justify some shit, boy, you, you in trouble. To live a more effective life, then absolutely. So are there circumstances in which I would do it? Absolutely. But I'm able to get that in ways that don't require killing a sentient being. If I can do it that way, I'll do it that way. That's the way I look at it. And then what about the- If I can do it, then I want to do T.I. All the deductive reasoning here. We're done. This guy's ENTP, okay? I'm going ENTP on this guy. So ENTP, E N Vivek, you are an E N T P. It's awesome, man. We need more of you guys running for president. It means it's gonna be very funny to see you debate people. So they are initiating. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna rate this guy. He seems to be pretty focused. He has any. He gets things done. Um, billionaire um, seems to I mean it's very important for ENTPs to have a good um, upbringing you know and a very structured one helps them quite a bit I'm gonna, I'm gonna go this guy is prodigy he's, he's crossing he's crossing he might be demigod I don't know enough about him but he's crossing into that demigod territory okay very, very well polished guy if he's going to be running for president here. Yeah. Um, so initiating abstract, they're systematic, talking about optimal, things like that. Uh, he's informative, okay, let's give him a lot of extra information. He's pragmatic. He thinks of self accusation. Um, he uh, believes in autonomy. Um, that's why he kind of went an entrepreneur, stuff like that. Um, he likes his freedom. He talks about rebellion against his parents and stuff like that. That's rebellion. Um, this would be more pragmatic. He's progression. He's all about the journey. He's not listing per outcomes or anything like that, um, or results, if you want to use that. Uh, he's S E N I. He's high, 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 high. And he, I mean, we picked it out very early on in the in the uh, in the video that this guy is a any in the first or second spot, like because it's just open minded talking about being open minded, talking about choices, talking about paths, uh, things like that. That. Pfft, you can just tell. Talking about always wanting to explore new ideas. Uh, any, any. You hear that? So, ooh, any. Okay. Um, he's Ti. He's using deductive reasoning. If this and that statements. Uh, he's talking about being ethical as well. Um, so we got him as an ENTP. The hard part here is I really don't feel particularly comfortable with giving this guy an enneagram. So. Um, I mean, I, I could throw. Mm, I mean, I, I just ain't gonna do it. I, I'm not gonna do it. Um, he seems to be kind of difficult here because 
I can't see. He seems to be very curious. Um, so I, I could probably throw maybe a 7W6 or a 4W5 at him. Um, and I lean a little bit more towards the 7W6. Me personally, um, uh, 7W6, if I did say probably... SO 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 If I had to if I had to guess I'm not saying it's correct I'd go 7W6 okay um I would say more of a social I think he's social uh and slash SP mm, That's what I would give him okay um but I'm not 100% correct on that I just type this guy. I don't really know much about him or anything. I didn't really, really wasn't able to gather much there. Um, politicians, you know, they know how to fake it till you make it. And ENTPs know how to fake everything till you make it. So uh, we got him as an ENTP prodigy going to Demigod. It's pretty easy to see that this guy is high in E. Um, look forward to seeing this guy on the political uh, debates. I'm pretty sure he's going to fuck some people up. So um, this is Mongolian Mindset. And comment below if you got his type right. Or if you notice the things that I noticed. And if you're actually getting better at typing. And uh, yeah, see you guys on the next exciting episode.